Greetings, and this is uh, Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries, John 8, 12. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, spiritual darkness, but shall have the light of life. Somebody wrote me a letter asking me to do a rebuttal uh, about, uh, they were asking a, I don't know, I suppose a local Baptist church about some things. And, uh, well, let's take a look at what this says. Uh, he writes, he says, uh, thanks for your reply. The Baptist tradition, they're Baptists, is committed to sola scripture which means that scripture alone is authoritative for the faith and practice of the Christian. Do you consider yourself a Baptist? And my reply would be, no, I am a believer in Jesus Christ. I guess you could say a Christian, right? I'm not a Baptist or a Methodist or a Catholic, Presbyterian, Lutheran, no, because I don't, I'm not a Calvinist. Um, so, all right. Let's keep reading. They write, according to scripture, the church is called to Bible preaching, teaching, worship, discipleship, fellowship, and evangelism. I'm not sure by what you mean by protesting, uh, but it diminishes the other mandates, then it should not be done. In other words, being a church member is one thing, being an activist is another. According to my reading of the scriptures, there is no biblical precedent for a local church functioning in an activist capacity. Can you think of any? Bob's note here. Uh, protesting. You see, the Roman church that claims to be the mother church says that all those that are outside of the mother, uh, Roman church, the mother church, are Protestants protesting. Well, that's just their opinion. So, but that's not what they're talking about here. Uh, how do I explain this? Well, let's keep, let's read this and we'll see. It'll, it'll make more sense. All right, let's continue reading. Of course, in the course of Bible preaching teaching, we must teach the truth about what the Bible says regarding uh, the give me an L, now give me a G, give me a B, give me a T, and give me a Q. Uh, it says Islam didn't exist in Bible times, so scripture doesn't address it directly. And most Baptists believe wholeheartedly in the separation of church and state. Uh, we're going to go into this. Why do so-called Baptists believe in the separation of church and state? Well, we're going to get into that. Meaning that the church should never compel the government to ban non-Christian migrants. If we really want a Christian nation, it should be achieved through evangelism, not legislation. Oh, boy. Bob's comment here. Do you know that... Uh, Non-Christian immigrants were pretty much banned by this country up until the Civil Rights Act of so-called of 1964. Yeah. You know, this country was mostly either, well, Christian people. Now, where did this so-called separation of church and state come from? Well, originally Thomas Jefferson said that the state should not interfere with the church. Now, that was originally what the early believers of the United States uh, did. The government's laws reflected what the church believed. But over the last, oh, I don't know, 50 years or, well, no, more than that. Let's say 60, 70 years. The Antichrist, we'll get into that more later, have flipped this church and state thing, separation on its head, and said, oh, the church shouldn't, shouldn't get involved with what the government does. 
Well, why is that? Well, in the United States, we have a thing called the Internal Revenue Service, the IRS. And if you want to be tax exempt as a business, you can call your business a church. But actually, uh, it's under IRS Regulation 501c3. It's considered charitable organization. You are considered tax exempt. However, you are not allowed to speak against what they call public policy. In other words, if they want to have so, S-O, uh, Dom, D-O-M, I-T-E, marriage, um, you're not allowed to say, hey, wait a minute, the Bible's against that. We can't allow that because it brings curses upon our nation. Uh, the government says, wait a minute, you want to keep your tax exempt status. You're not allowed to say that because it's public policy now. So the church, so-called, which is basically a creation of the state and the government, it's basically a business with the name church in it. I don't care if you call yourself the First Baptist Church. It's a creation of the state, chartered by the state, given tax-exempt status, and uh, you have to follow the state's rules, not the government. So when you try to get these devils to start preaching Bible truth, they're not going to do it. You cannot reform Babylon. So anything that's wicked and evil, the church has to, well, we can't pro we can't we can't change the state's mind on this. We we gotta preach evangelism and tell the the heretics that God loves them. When the Bible says to do something a little bit different. Well, a lot different. So uh, if you don't know what that is, read Romans chapter 1 sometime, okay? And they'll say, well, you know, the church was, uh, uh, there's no uh, precedent for, for protesting. Well, you know, you know why in the days of Christ, the Romans, the brutal Romans were in charge of the, uh, the world? Judgment of God. Yeah. Anytime you have an evil government, it's because the people's hearts are evil. When the man of sin, the son of perdition, the antichrist, the beast, whatever Bible name that it has, whether you're listening to Paul or John or whatever, when the heart of the people is evil, you're going to have an evil government. See, they would, 200 years ago, the, the churches would never have allowed the government to allow S.O. and uh, D.O.M.I.T.E.S. to uh, adopt little boys or get married. It wouldn't have happened. But now, today, they say, well, you know, we, we got to evangelize them because God loves them. I don't think so, but... Uh, you know, it's because they want to keep that tax exempt status. They want you to believe just enough to throw money in the collection plate every month or every week, rather, but not enough to change your life and demand that the laws of the nation reflect the laws of the Bible. They don't want to do that. Uh uh, no, we can't do that. I mean, that would, uh uh. Um,. Let's see. Uh, da, 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 da. If we, uh, they write, if we really wanted a Christian nation, it should be achieved through evangelism, not legislation. Uh, yeah. Well, you know what? We've got an antichrist nation through legislation. So, yeah. Um. All right, let's see. 
I'm going to continue reading. They went to a certain Baptist church's website, and in their section on doctrine, it reads, Everyone is a sinner, but certain sins should be punished with the death penalty by the government, such as murder, rape, uh, homo, you know what, bestiality, adultery, witchcraft, uh, striking, cursing your parents, and other capital punishments. And then they asked, do you support this view? Well, I if they don't support death to murders, uh, the so-called church, well, if they don't support death to for witchcraft and Satanism, maybe it's because they're part of it. They're just a Jesus-flavored country club. You know when you know what happens when you tolerate gross wickedness? It spreads like a cancer. When you got witches in, in schools teaching the children about Harry Potter and telling everybody Jesus was a myth or a false teacher or prophet or whatever, is that what you want? And then they say, oh, well, this is not expressly done away in the New Testament. And then they they run to the, this guy says, uh, oh, so where's this in the Bible? It, where's this view in the Bible taught? There are 613 commandments in the Old Testament. Which which ones do you think are explicable today? Unless they are expressly abolished in the New Testament. Uh, you know, see, that's the thing. They just explain everything away. Now, let me tell you about Baptists, because I, I have a master's degree from a Baptist Bible college. I know it, and I didn't go there to learn about the Bible. I went there to learn their false doctrines so that I could refute them. For example, the pre-trib rapture. Where would you come up with a pre-trib rapture if you never had some preacher explaining it to you? If you were just reading the King James Bible alone, where would you find this? You would not. Doesn't exist. All right, Baptists are famous for their pre-trib rapture. In the first resurrection of the dead in Christ, it happens at the end of the tribulation. The second resurrection of the dead is after a thousand years. Paul wrote that the dead in Christ must rise first. The dead in Christ, the Christians that died, will rise first. Then we who are alive and remain will be caught up to meet the Lord in the air. That's in 1 Thessalonians 4. 16 and 17. And the dead in Christ shall rise first, then we, which are alive and remain, shall be caught up together with them in the clouds. All right. So, in Revelation 20, verses 4 and 5, John sees the souls of the saints who were beheaded for refusing the mark of the beast during the Great Tribulation. These people are in Christ. But the Baptists will tell you, oh no, they, they're they second-class Christians. You know, they died for their faith, but they're second-class Christians. So they're not going to be in the pre-trib rapture. I mean, really, this is, they will explain all this away. So, John writes that all those in Christ will rise and reign with Christ for a thousand years, and that this is the first resurrection So, if according to John, the beheaded rise in the first resurrection, then Paul said that those who are alive and remain are not caught up until after the dead in Christ are resurrected, then this means the catching up or the rapture resurrection takes place after the tribulation. It has to. It does, no, you know, you can't, you don't have multiple Pre-trib, rapture, rapture, second coming, third coming. It, no. Uh, so. So when did Jesus say the dead in Christ would be resurrected? In John chapter 6, verses 39 and 40. Jesus said, this is the will of him who sent me that of all that he has given me, I will lose nothing, but will but raise it up on the last 
day. In John 6, 44, Jesus said, No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws him, and I will raise him up on the last day. Is the last day the beginning of the thousand-year reign of Christ? I think so. Then it will be eternity, and time is counted no more. So, if Jesus himself said the dead in Christ will be raised on the last day, and Paul said, we who are alive and remain will not be caught up until after the dead are raised, then where does the secret preacher of rapture fit in? It doesn't. It's a lie from the pit of hell, and Baptists are famous for this lie from the pit of hell. Paul, in 1 Corinthians 15, 52, he writes, In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump. Okay, trump is a sound that a trumpet makes. For the trumpet shall sound, and the dead, the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. We are changed at the last trump, and where is this found? In Revelation, the last book of the Bible. There are seven trumps and the, during the tribulation, and the seventh trump is the last one. There's not a last trump before the first one. It doesn't work like that. In the English language, the letter Z is the last one. It's the last letter in the alphabet. You can't have a Z before the A and say, oh, that's the pre secret pre trib rapture Z. It doesn't work like that. There's not a seventh last trump prior to the tribulation. So it just don't make any sense. Now, the thing is, even if you show the Baptists where the Bible proves them wrong on a thing, well, what they do is they chop the Bible up into these seven time periods, which they call dispensations. All right. But the thing is, dispensation comes from the word dispense. You ever heard of a soap dispenser? What does a soap dispenser dispense? Soap. You know, you go to the bathroom and you wash your hands and you go to the soap dispenser and you think and you get soap on your hands. The word dispensation appears in the Bible I think it's four times. So let's take a look at that. Now this is where they get this dispensation is time. Ephesians 1.10 That in the dispensation of the fullness of times he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on the earth, even in him. Colossians 1.25 Whereof, now this is all Paul. Whereof I am made a minister according to the dispensation of God. What did God give us? Uh, the law through Moses and grace. Okay. According to the dispensation of God, which is given to me for you to fulfill the word of God. Ephesians 3 and verse 2. If ye have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God... Is the grace of God a time period? No. I mean, there was a time when Christ died, we were given grace. I mean, there's obviously, you know, if I hand you, uh, if I hand my daughter car keys on her 16th birthday for a car, I say, I'm giving you a car. I mean, there's a period, you know, there's a moment in time when I'm giving her the keys, but is that car a a dispensation of time? No. There was a time when God gave us grace. If you have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God, which is given to me, you word. 1 Corinthians 9.17 For if I do this thing willingly, I have a reward, but if against my will, a dispensation of the gospel is committed unto me. How do you take these four words and then write a 372-page book book on periods of time okay there's only two dispensations in the bible law and grace the old testament the old covenant the old testament the new testament the new covenant period 
Moses was given the law who gave it to Israel, and Christ gave us grace. In the book of John, chapter 7 and verse 19, Jesus said to the Antichrist, he said, Did not Moses give you the law? And yet none of you keepeth the law. Why go ye about to kill me? Hmm. In John 1, 17, For the law, the Ten Commandments, For the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. It's not a period of time. So even if you show these Baptist churches something in the Bible, they'll just say, oh, well, that, that's a different dispensation. That, that applies to that group of people. That doesn't apply to us. Now, they don't even think the, uh, anything before the book of Acts even applies to the modern day church. They explain all that stuff away. Unbelievable. Now you see, they have to do that to keep their tax exempt status as a business creation with the name church in it. You know, First Baptist Church. Oh yeah. You want to keep your tax exempt status? You got to do what the government tells you to do. If we want to have little boys adopted by uh, a pair of men who they claim are married and you say anything against that well you're going to lose your tax exempt status and we'll hit you with a tax bill and when you don't pay it we'll hit you and throw you in prison for tax evasion that's how it works buddy so um yeah uh, and you wonder why the world is so evil today. There was a time the government did what the church said. Now the so-called business called a church does what the wicked government says. And do you know that the so-called Baptist church teaches that the Antichrist are God's chosen people? In 1 John chapter 4, and verse 3, we read, And every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. And this is that spirit of Antichrist, whereof ye have heard that it should come, and even now already is it in the world. Uh, Jesus Christ was God in the flesh. In 1 John chapter 2, in verse 22, we read, Who is a liar? But he that denieth that Jesus is the Christ. Any group of people, individuals or group, that says that Jesus is not the Christ, Jesus is not the Messiah. Well, let's read it. Who is a liar? But he that denieth that Jesus is the Christ. He is Antichrist that denieth the Father and the Son. Whosoever denieth the Son, the same hath not the Father. But he that acknowledgeth the Son hath the Father also. Baptists will say, well, you know the you-know-whos. Well, they don't have the Son, but they got the Father. Uh, what did Jesus say about that? John 8, 44. That's what he says. Let's take a look at that. Let's start with John 8. Verse 39, they, if you don't know who they are, well, we'll get to that. They answered and said unto him, they're speaking to Jesus, Abraham is our father. Jesus saith unto them, if ye were Abraham's children, ye would do the works of Abraham. But now ye seek to kill me, a man that hath told you the truth, which I have heard of God, this did not Abraham. Ye do the deeds of your father. Then said they to him, We be not born of fornication. We have one father, even God. Jesus said unto them, If God were your father, ye would love me. For I proceeded forth and came from God. Neither came I of myself, but he sent me. Why do ye not understand my speech? 
even because ye cannot hear my word. Ye are of your father the devil, and the lusts of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning. Who was a murderer from the beginning? Cain. Isn't that funny? Talking about their father the devil, and then they're talking about the murderer from the beginning. Hmm, is there a connection there? He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. And the father of it. And because I tell you the truth, ye believe me not. He's not doing a figure of speech here. He's not calling them names. You're of your father, the devil. Na, 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 na. No. He says, I tell you the truth. I believe Jesus. Verse 46. Which of you convinceth me of sin? And if I say the truth, why do you not believe me? He that is of God heareth God's words. Do you hear God's words? Ye therefore hear them not, because ye are not of God. Then answer the... Uh, you know who I dare not say that word because uh, yeah verse 48 then answer the you know who's so we obviously know who he's speaking to here is there a group of people in this world that deny that Jesus is the Christ and they await their own Messiah and want to build a temple oh yeah yep and the Baptists say that the Antichrist are God's chosen people I don't think so, but, uh, you know, what do I know? Six years of Baptist Bible College. You know, they tried to brainwash me, but uh, they failed. And they say they believe the Bible, but really they don't. They're liars. And they're part of, they're part of Mystery Babylon. They're part of Babylon. You cannot reform Babylon. I think that almost every single church is headed by a Satanist. I, I, either that or they're willing to compromise to keep the money coming in. I don't know. You know, I could be wrong. And believe me, I've stumbled and fallen a number of times. I am no great pillar of faith. Trust me there. I'm ashamed of many things that I've done in my 30 some odd years of being a believer and yeah i'm ashamed of a lot of things but uh i would like to believe i've never intentionally misled anybody on the bible but so when they ask you are you a baptist no I'm a follower of Christ, and I don't believe the Antichrist are God's chosen people. I think Christians are. Let's take a look at Galatians 3 and verse 29. And we'll see who God's chosen people are. And if ye be Christ, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Christ even said that, you know, unless the Father drew you to him, we read that earlier, didn't we? God the Father has to draw you to his Son. I absolutely believe in election. But a lot of people don't. They say, well, whosoever will. But Christ said to those you know who in John chapter 8, you don't hear God's word because you're not of God. So, I don't know. Is there a perfect uh, church in this world? Well, if there was and I joined it, it wouldn't be perfect anymore. So, I don't think so. None of us has it all right. You know, I mean, I, I, I don't claim to be have perfection in doctrine. But I, you know, I just... Pre-trib rapture, dispensational, dispensational, dispensation, Satanist 
Theology, no. It's sad. And things are going to get worse and worse. What's going to happen to the faith of millions of lukewarm Baptists when they find out that they're going to have to die for the faith at the hands of the Antichrist that they've been taught were God's chosen people? How many of them are going to lose their faith, their lukewarm faith, and then follow the Antichrist? I think millions, but I digress. So, all right, well, uh, I don't know. I think most of the so-called churches are, well, they're just businesses. And like I say, they want you to believe just enough to throw money in that collection plate every, every week, but not enough to demand that we get rid of evil and wicked doers. So when you have so much wickedness in a nation, it brings curses upon your nation that we're about to find out. But, uh, oh, we need to preach to them and have evangelism and tell them God's love them. I don't think so. There are certain sins that God wanted to cease. And witchcraft was one of them. And in 1966, on June 6, 6, 6, 1966, the Church of Satan was founded. Yeah. You think that would have happened 200 years ago? Uh, I don't think so. I think they would have uh, put all their members in the building, a, a building, and burned it down with them inside of it. But, yeah, what do I know? And, yeah, I, I it saddens me. It really does. But, you know, I'm just one person. All right, well, you know, this is why I'm not a Baptist. And like I say, I, I went, attended Baptist Bible College to learn what they believe so I could prove it wrong. So... They did teach some good things, okay? The Godhead, belief in the King James Bible, but, you know, when you believe in dispensational theology and chop the Bible up into all these different time periods and say, well, this time applies to this group, and that time period applies to that group, and we're not in this group, and we're not in that group, so this doesn't apply to us. You know, you're just explaining it away. So you may as well throw the Bible away if you don't believe it. So... What can I tell you? And, of course, they want you to believe the Antichrist or the chosen people, but I don't believe that. I think the people of the Old Testament are the same people of the New Testament, and vice versa. So, all right, all blessings, praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' precious name. Amen.